actually means to live in accordance with nature? Yeah. If humans are already part of it. Well, so I'd like to turn to the text here because there's a controversy about what this means. Um, it's not very clear. Um, and even in Cicero, he says the early Stoics didn't agree, and they had three different, or at least three different ways of interpreting what it means. Okay, and just think generally about this idea of nature. Okay, so uh, there's there's a book called um, Primitivism in, in Antiquity by Lovejoy that has an appendix that has 100 different definitions of nature that were used in, in antiquity, all totally different. Okay. Nature is invoked all over the place to explain everything. So, <coughs> some people are naturally homosexual, according to nature. But then other people think that homosexuality is contrary to nature. Okay, so nature is used on both sides of that divide. Go into the grocery store, find little stickers that say natural. What does that, what does that mean? I saw one the other day, really puzzling. It was on a piece of cheese and it said, real. And I was like, wow, this like an ontological moment. It's like, here's something that's real. Cream like cheese. Um, okay, so, so the notion of nature is not immediately obvious what it, what it means. And one thing it can mean is the whole Cosmos. Another thing it can mean is human nature, or animal nature, or the nature of living things. And all of those would have different um, implications. Living in accordance with animal nature. I'm an animal after all, right? Not like, woohoo, I'm, I'm an animal, but I am, right? And I'm also a kind of plant, and I'm a human, which nature am I supposed to live in accordance with? Those are all part of my nature. Or am I supposed to live in accordance with the whole cosmos? And how couldn't I? I mean, how, how would you not live in accordance with it? OK, so we have to get further into this question. And, and we've got, and Bronson is doing, is, is actually researching this as the focus of his paper, what the hell do they mean by living in accordance with nature? And because it's a really intriguing thing that, that is still around, and we still think we want to we want to live naturally. That's still there's still something about that. There's a kind of normative pull to this idea of let's live naturally. Let's not be artificial. Um, and it could be consistent with a kind of environmental ethics. Live in accordance with nature. That's a very it's a very attractive notion. We're like destroying nature right now. Let's 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 change and live in accordance with it instead. Okay, so that's all to say it's unclear. This is a big philosophical issue. And a slogan living in accordance with nature only goes so far. We have to philosophically unpack it. So in section 14 of book four. Um, we are told that um, even predecessors of Zeno said that the supreme good was to live in accordance with nature, and that the Stoics interpret this formula, so says Cicero, in three ways. Okay, so what's, what's the first way? Explain what the first way that they hold is, how you, how you interpret the first explanation that he gives. Bronson, why don't you do that? Because we, we've talked about this already. Um, so it's actually kind of a really interesting um, question. And I feel like it's easier to look down at um, footnote 15 to kind of start this. That um, the editor says that uh, this is actually like misattributed and also misquoted. Um, so Zeno himself originally just said to live consistently, which of course has nothing to, like it doesn't have nature in it at all. And so that could be taken in a lot of different ways and a lot of like research seems to suggest that Zeno meant something maybe even more along the lines of the cynics of just kind of like eschewing almost everything about society and just kind of being a, a hermit almost. 
Um, it was Chrysippus who added this, like, well, how, how would you interpret, if, if that's right, living consistently, I can think of two things that could mean. One, consistent with something, and then I'm wondering what that thing is. Or consistently meaning, I don't contradict myself. I, I don't do things at variance with my own beliefs or something. Is that, is that what living consistently is supposed to mean? Well, so Chrysippus and the future Stoic <coughs> interpreted to be in terms of consistently with nature. So they added the nature, like consistently with nature, okay. to that. So you're taking the former. Right, taking the former. Okay. Um, so okay, but, but that's yeah. that's. I, I just I just want an, a gloss or an explanation on the first possible interpretation of living in accordance with nature. So in just in terms of one's knowledge, it would be knowledge about the fact that nature, the co and that's the cosmos, since that's what they mean by nature, is rational, and that humans share in that rationality and would be acting according to the knowledge of the fact that we have ration, rationality. Um, okay, so this is, this is like living in accordance with nature means understanding nature, right. physics. Studying physics and then living and then and then drawing certain conclusions about the nature of reality and living in accordance with, with that kind of knowledge. Right. So if you have knowledge that um, climate change is happening, then you, living consistently with that might require you to exactly. reduce consumption or something. Exactly. Okay, so that, there's, there's one possible answer, is that living in accordance with nature means knowing what the hell nature is, i.e. doing physics, and then somehow living in accordance with it. There's problems with that view, but that, that at least gives us some idea of what it could mean. Okay, what, do you want to go on? Um, so, the second interpretation is... I really only dealt with the first interpretation so far in my research. Um, okay, did w anybody else even explain to us what is meant by this second one, which doesn't reiterate the word nature? Yeah. Well, the way I read it, it seems you should have wisdom. It's the virtue of wisdom where you know which actions to take and which are appropriate. And since uh, living in accordance with nature also means possessing all virtues, if you possess all virtues, if you possess the virtue of wisdom, you know what to do and when to do it. And that is the supreme good, because you have all the virtues and you are living in accordance with nature. Uh, okay, that's, that's good, but it doesn't account for the actual terminology here in section 15. The second interpretation is that it means, quote, to live performing all or most of the intermediate appropriate actions. Okay, so what is an intermediate appropriate action? Let's break that down. Well, I think they're referring to the preferred goods instead of, uh, well, things like uh, wealth, when it would be appropriate, it would be, and you, uh, I, it's referring to the notion of preferred versus actual good, where having wisdom would, would require you to be, to choose wisely in terms of preferred goods at the correct time. Okay, that's, that's, that's very close. I need to correct one thing you said there, but Michael, you want to come uh, in here? It kind of, I mean, it reminds me of the golden mean, or like, like Aristotle's thing of like moderation, like by saying the in intermediate, like it's like, kind of reminds me of like golden. Oh, like it's, like it's the mean. Yeah. Um, it, that actually is not being referred to here. Okay, so intermediate appropriate actions does refer to these actions that are neither good nor bad, but it doesn't mean, um, it doesn't have to do with discriminating between the ones that are preferred and dispreferred. That's obvious. We prefer health to disease. We prefer wealth to poverty. We prefer beauty to ugliness. Okay, um, but sometimes we need to select poverty, disease, and ugliness. Other times, the opposites, in order to engage in virtuous activity. 
and so virtuous activity isn't a matter isn't a matter of going. I want to be wise. I want to be self-controlled. So I'll just do that. What that means, having self-control means somebody puts chocolate cake in front of you and you decide not to eat it. Um, or, um, or somebody puts heroin in front of you and you decide not to do it in that case. Or do it if that's, if that's a good thing to do in that, if that's the right thing to do in that case. But, so, notice that we don't just immediately choose the end. We don't just choose virtue. Wouldn't that be nice if we just said, yeah, I'll just choose to be a courageous person. No, it means choosing to hold your line in battle when that is the right thing to do. Sometimes it, the right thing to do is run, okay? If there's, if it's you versus 10,000 Spartans, then it would be, it, it would be foolhardy, not courageous to stand the line in battle there, um, but if it's a matter of protecting your homeland and, and you, you can do it and so forth, then um, choosing those intermediate actions is the right thing. So virtue comes down to not just choosing to be virtuous, in fact that, that, that we don't do at all. I mean that's just a matter of what our value system is. The real way to be virtuous is to choose correctly the intermediate things. And so that, that, that does require not confusing intermediate things with ends, like not thinking that health is intrinsically a good thing. Um, but, and, and of course we, we need to discriminate between preferred and dispreferred indifference, but what it really means is choosing dispreferred indifference when when that is the virtuous thing to do. Okay, so that is a very different sense, it seems, of living in accordance with nature than living in accordance with my knowledge of the natural order as a result of studying physics and doing science. Okay, much more, much more immediately ethically focused um, idea there. Okay, and, and so just just to give Cicero his due, let, what's the third one? So let somebody explain what he says the third interpretation is. Michael? Yeah, so he says... Um, live in enjoyment of all or most of, or the most important things that are in accordance with nature. But he said that to do this is only available to the to the wise. Uh, where does he say that? Uh, like a little bit further down, it says, however, the supreme good that is set out in this third interpretation and the life based upon it is only available to the wise, since virtue is a part of it. Okay, um, and this is where. Okay, so, so first of all, let's make sure we understand what it means. What does it mean to live in enjoyment of all, or the most important things that are in accordance with nature? And how is that different from live performing all or most of the intermediate appropriate actions? Because uh, in this one, you have, you have to actually possess those things. Okay, you have to actually possess... It looks like this one has that you have to actually possess the virtues, and only the wise do that. Um, now, um, in the footnotes, which Bronson told us all to read, um, and, and we certainly should read when we come into confusing things like this, um, we're told that this really isn't fair. It looks like Cicero's making up a thing that the, that the Stoics really shouldn't accept. So what is the problem, you think, with this idea that you need to actually enjoy and succeed in accomplishing the things in order to live in accordance with nature? Um, well, didn't, did, I don't think they ever like, actually claimed that anyone was a sage, right? They said that everyone was working towards it, but did they ever actually claim anyone to have reached sagehood? Well, they have, they have some examples. 
you know, Socrates, Diogenes, those kind of those those, those guys were probably sages. Maybe, maybe not, but probably were. Um, yeah, they're they're pretty rare. In fact, it might it might there might not be anyone. Um, so that's true. But what does that? Uh, what, 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 I, I don't. I, what does that have to do with the problem with this interpretation? That there are too many things that aren't in your control, which would determine whether you become that. Exactly, and that says he goes on to say that this depends on things that aren't in our own power. Whether I actually, whether consequentially, I end up achieving those things is not is not in my power. And so we don't want to make living in accordance with nature, which is the goal, something that is not in my, in my power. First of all, it doesn't recognize the nature of the kind of thing I am, which is a thing that only has control over my own reasoning and, and, and my value system. But second of all, it totally goes against the Stoic idea. Stoics are what we call anti-consequentialists. Very strange term, anti-consequentialism. That means they consider the consequences irrelevant. Well, all, what matters is the state of mind of the person deciding. And so they compare this to um, an archer. You want to have the skill of an archer, okay? And you want to you want to um, pluck the bow as skillfully as possible. But if somebody moves the target or a gust of wind comes along and blows it away so that you don't exactly hit the bullseye, that doesn't matter. You, should, you shouldn't um, cheat in order to make sure it actually does hit it or something. What, you all, what, what, what matters is the intentions you have behind it. Consequences are totally irrelevant. So they can't really accept this view that that you have to actually have the consequence of achieving all of these things. And additionally, there's the fact that it's not clear that anyone has ever achieved these things. It's still the only worthwhile thing to do. Um, but, but, and, and there's a couple of examples of people that probably did. As I said, Zeno himself, the head of the school, Socrates, it looks like Socrates chose all the appropriate intermediate things. He, he, he basically was wise, was courage, did have self-control. Um, so there are, there, are, there are people we can point to. You know, Confucius is someone like this. The Buddha might be someone like this. So there are, there are these, these people, and they're doing it right. And we all should be trying to do it right. And don't give up and think, well, I'm not going to be able to become a moral sage, so I may as well just pursue wealth or something, that's worthless. And that actually leads, that'll, that'll entrap you in, in, in vice. At least this other thing gives you a possibility of happiness. Okay, so there's, so there's a problem with that third um, interpretation, but it's a deep problem because it has to do with whether the results and outcomes really matter. And they take, they take a hard line on this. They don't matter. Okay, so the Stoics have easy answers to questions that, for example, utilitarians like to pose. Suppose you could chop up an innocent person and, and distribute their organs to five sick people and so save their lives. Would that, is, would that be a good uh, thing to do? No, it doesn't, because it doesn't matter if you save other people's, five other people's lives. Lie, what matters is whether you were, would do an unjust thing there. Okay? And again, consequences totally irrelevant. What matters is the, the state of mind and the value judgments made about the things. You don't, have, you don't have control over consequences. So we can't be responsible for them. Now, um, so those, those are the views that Cicero gives, and not all of them, there might even be something to the third one. I'm not sure if the footnote is right that this is completely anti-Stoic. It could have been a strain of, of Stoicism or something like that. But those are three different accounts of living in accordance with nature, but, but more research on it is, is, um, is needed.
Um, and there are other questions that remain. If you think that it means living in accordance with human nature, what do you mean by human nature? Apparently they mean reason. Reason is, after all, what makes us humans, what differentiates us from other animals. We are animals. What kind of animals? Animals that use language and animals that reason. So I need to live in accordance with reason, but what reason tells me is that certain things are good, certain things are bad, and certain things are indifferent. So I need to live in accordance with those. Well, and so that means selecting the right things that are indifferent so as to bring about the goods and avoid the bad things. And in order to gain that knowledge of what's good and bad, one must understand the physical cosmos and the fact that it is rationally ordered and that reasonable explanations of the causes of things happening in it are possible. Okay, so you can sort of tie in these different elements of, of the definition together.